Us, what's up? It's me back again, Analog Attack, and I'm chuffed to bits to welcome back to the channel, Mr. Chris Corey. How you doing, sir? All right. How are you today? Pretty good. Saturday, Sunday morning. Yep. Coming Some down. Drink. Mm. And uh, but I'm Cheers. excited to see you again. What are we going to talk about today, Chris? What's today's theme? All right. Well, I wear my Aussie shirt. Oh, we got my Dio hat. Ben. Uh, so it must be Dio and Aussie, Aussie. versus Dio. Not COC. No. <laughs> so what we're going to do, we're going to pick out our favorites from the 80s discography of both artists, Ozzy Osbourne and Dio. We'll talk about each record and pick our favorites. Should be interesting. Yeah. Are you so, ready? Have you thought about this? I have thought about it, actually, and I actually spent a little bit of time sort of revisiting a couple of the records um i should say before we start i'm much more familiar with the aussie uh discography than i am with the dio that's fair. i mean i bought the first two aussie when they came out and to be honest i in the mid 80s i don't think i even was aware of a dio solo career which is kind of strange but yeah these things you happen know, you know there's yeah, gaps. You know, and, and you know i was a huge Heaven and Hell and Mob Rules fan and obviously Rainbow fan, but for some reason I, you know, I wasn't aware of Dio's solo stuff until you know more recent times, maybe twenty years ago. How about you, Chris? What was your sort of introduction? Well, I think I mean it seems like there's been a reappraisal of Dio where like he was kind of brushed off um, when I first you know because I heard Heaven and Hell mm. when I sort of ran out of Black Sabbath Aussie albums to listen to. Right. Yeah. So I got that and I was like, well, this is weird. This doesn't sound like Black Sabbath. And then, you know, I came to love it. And then I heard Rainbow and then I heard oh. Dio Solo. Right. Um, you know, I'll probably like around 15, 16 years ago now. Probably, the, you know, for me, probably about the same with Dio, actually. Yeah. So. And uh, yeah, I, at the time, it seemed like he was kind of like brushed off a bit uh by metal people like it's sort of been forgotten or was considered like a little bit passe but you know it seems now that people have a lot of reverence for oh. for his whole career and you know he's sort of seen as like a guy that was always like a standard bearer for like heavy metal heavy metal you know, where yeah, it's like absolutely yeah you know we all love ozzy but like i think it's undeniable that he's like chased some trends in his career you know, so yeah. I was doing a little bit of sort of fishing around on the internet, and I think it was about 50 50. A lot of people were like, definitely Dio, others were you know, definitely Aussie. But I mean, Aussie was selling way more records, right, than Dio <coughs> in this era, way, way more, right? I think, yeah, I think really, um, I didn't look up well, for one thing, you know, Blizzard of Oz has like. Blizzard of Oz, Diary of a Madman, those records have sold, you know, sort of like indefinitely from the time they were released. Right. Whereas, yeah. you know, Holy Diver probably sold a lot when it first came out, mm -hmm. but uh, that that obviously tapered off as sort of like his audience and exposure contracted. Right. All right. Um, mm -hmm. All right. So shall we get started? I guess Ozzy was sort of about three years ahead in terms of releases, right? So Blizzard of yeah. Oz, first LP. Oh, very nice, sir. The Looking good. Obi. Yes. Yeah. So as I said, I bought this one when it came out. And I, I was thinking about this. And even back then, we were sort of a little bit, this is a little bit off. It, it, there's a little bit of filler on here. It wasn't quite what we were kind of expecting. Obviously, it sounds nothing like Black Sabbath, which was a little bit jarring at the time and um, i don't know it's a great song crazy train uh, i could one of those songs i can kind of live without i guess but then it just goes straight into goodbye to romance which is kind of one of my least favorite aussie ballads and i think no bow movies is a little bit of a throwaway track kind of a sub sub rock and roll doctor kind of buy to it okay yeah. yeah so that's my take as i said you know, i bought it new and even then we felt 
it was so, there was something missing. I thought. So yeah, that's my take on Blitz. Uh, but I love the artwork. I love the cover. It's kind of still got like one foot in the seventies. It's a little bit yeah looking. Yeah, so it's still got the like the natural hair and everything. You know, like so, it's yeah. um. I mean, so. Blizzard of Oz, like obviously, so it's a classic album. Like all these albums, to me, are classic albums. Yeah, but the yeah. thing about Blizzard of Oz is that it's probably the only Ozzy album that was written like as a band. Okay. And the way the way it went down is he had kind of like, you know, done these guitarist auditions, had found Randy Rhodes, mm. they had uh, pulled in Bob Daisley. I think I've read an interview with him. I think it was in Chips and Beer magazine. So shout out mm. to them. All right. Um, but he was kind of pulled in, just known through his like work with Rainbow and known for his work as a lyricist and songwriter with some other artists. Mm. Um, and I don't know if they got Lee Kerslake before or after that, but they sort of brought these guys all together. And I think initially they felt that this was a new band called the Blizzard of Oz. Right. It was not <clears throat> Ozzy Osbourne's Blizzard of Oz or right. Ozzy Osbourne. Right. And um, like early promotional material reflects that. Um, there's that you know, famous pic. There's that picture of isn't there with Ozzy with the homemade, yes, like, Blizzard of Oz t-shirt. So a fun fact: hmm. uh, that picture's from '77. It's a Sabbath picture. He had right. made a Blizzard of Oz yeah. shirt, and he'd been talking about how he was going to do his own band called Blizzard of Oz for right. years. And the original aborted version of that was him and the guys from Necromandis. That's right. Yeah. Uh, yep. Another Birmingham band yep. who had an unreleased album produced by Tony Iommi that uh, Rise Above Records put out uh, it, sometime in the 2000s. It's basically prog. Yeah, it's very jazzy. Jazzy um, So prog. it's funny to think of those guys um, <laughs> as the first mm. attempt at Blizzard of Oz. That yeah. was a few years prior. They put this together. I think they were holed up for like six weeks or some time like that to put together the material. Um, they eventually got Don Airy in there. He of Never Say Die and also uh, Rainbow and now Deep Purple. Right. Uh, to do all the keyboard work. But I like that. I like that. What I like about this album the most is that it's the sound of like guys that are like, this is a band. We're yeah. trying things that, that are new. We're doing like, you know, sky's the limit. We can do Goodbye to Mother Earth and we can also do Mr. Crowley. Ozzy's trying new stuff vocally. Um, and what, yeah, the recording dates here, about three weeks, four weeks. So a couple right. weeks to work yeah. up material, a couple weeks to record. Yeah, yeah, that's one thing I like about the 70s especially and so i feel it's almost a 70s album where yeah. it's just like these guys just get together bang out the album right. and it's done you have a favorite track favorite couple of tracks mr crowley i saw that yesterday yeah and of course this has the outtake uh or unreleased stu uh you said it all on it right. as well yeah yeah um yeah man it's it's a cool album you know i don't know if it's truly perfect and it sounds a little cheap but a lot of times i prefer things to sound a little chintzy i think it gives it more character so i i wish i wish they'd kept the name blizzard of oz right it's, it's I, you know i just i mean we can reminisce all day about randy Rhodes, but I, I do wish that they had been able to just be a band that band right. the original four for for more than two lps yeah absolutely agreed okay so I guess Blizzard of Oz is kind of going up against Holy, Holy Diver. Oh, what's that? You've got Japanese pressing. So I've got Japanese. I got. I just picked this up today, actually. Oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, I thought I was gonna impress you with my Japanese <laughs> obi, but yeah. I have the uh, heavy metal super series obi, and you seem to have the original obi with the the old school Dio logo I, on it. So I but, believe yours is a true first. Okay. I I could be wrong, but I think your one. They reissued that when Dio toured Japan, maybe, and they they released all the reissued all the Black Sabbath records too, right? With that, that makes sense to me, and I think I do. I have a Heaven and Hell with the heavy metal okay. uh, super okay. best, so that sounds about right. Yeah, so we're talking 1983. Okay, Blast in Line. I love this, this record. Is, 
I mean, okay, it's the best Dio record as far as his solo career, in my opinion. There's just, there's no comparing. And it is kind of, it is sort of like a, a Dio version of Blizzard of Oz, because again, right. this is really like, this is a band. This, these guys saw this as a band and not just as working as his backing unit. Right. Vivian Campbell on guitar, so, so good. Well, can we talk about that a little bit? Like, yeah. not, like Randy or Viv, which way, which, you know, which way is it going to go? Different styles, obviously. Okay. I, Randy was taken away really early. And so I think the, and I think because Randy was one of the first guys to get into the mainstream doing like the neoclassical style right. playing, um, you know, he sort of like he got to the top of that mountain before Ingve was really in the public consciousness. Right. I think Randy's always going to be the bigger name, but for me, Vivian is more the guy I like. He, I mean, you know, he well, he's Irish, but you know, he's at least from the UK, <laughs> and he just he has that that that. I mean, he he comes from Sweet Savage, you know, there's a new wave of British heavy metal band. It just has a certain edge that the American guys at that time didn't have, but it's still, it's so melodic and it's so, it's, it's just so, he's so good. And he's so like, so fully formed on this record. It's, it's actually crazy. That's, I'm and, really happy with what you said. Cause I was going to say almost exactly the same thing. I just like that kind of like raw, kind of new wave of British heavy metal feel to his plan. Some, I kind of, all the, the riffs, a lot of sort of new wave British heavy metal riffs, and uh, it, I just find he, it easy. He used a couple of Sweet Savage riffs on here, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. And I think the like the them making that record was a similar thing. I think it was like they just they hit a studio for about six weeks. I, yeah. From what I understand, when they started writing, Vivian wasn't even in the band yet. Okay. It was. Uh, maybe Ronnie or maybe just a session guy doing okay. rhythm guitar parts. Right. And they just were like piecing these songs together. Mm. Um, gotta, gotta mention Vinny Apache and mm. Jimmy Bain, Jimmy Bain of rainbow, Vinny yep. Apache previously on mob rules. Yep. And this is like, this could be Vinny Apache's finest hour. I mean, he's, he's just yep. absolutely on fire. And the songs are so simple too. It's just yeah. like, there's so much room for everybody to like, uh, you know, just sort of like let their personality show through. Yeah, I think it's just a kind of perfect sort of heavy metal record, really. Um, fabulous. Put this up against any Judas Priest record. Right. Okay. Mm. I, I, I'm i sorry to, to my British friends out there, you know, because I know it's an American singer, an American drummer, but it's as good as the best Priest stuff. And that is sort of, you know, that's like generally considered like, you know, metal right. for metal, like the, right. the standard bearers, the flag wavers. I think it's 10 to 10 on the same level. Me too. And I totally take it over the Blizzard of Oz. Yeah, so you're going to go with uh, Holy Diver? Yeah, so one one in the Dio column for me. Um, same for me. I Should, should we keep score? Yeah, All I right. think I can keep so, track of it. Dio 2, Aussie 0. There we go. There we go. And this is the official, this will be official at the end. Um, yes. All right. So next we're moving on to 81 for Aussie. Mm -hmm. Diary of a Madman. Very nice. This is sort of giving the game away a little bit, but this is by far my favorite of the four. Mm. I think it's pretty much perfect. Um, even the kind of semi ballads on it. I like uh, yeah. tonight, and uh, you can't kill rock and roll. I think always like it feels like a really kind of heartfelt song lyrically. It does. Um, it's so good, man. And yeah, I think they just improve everything yeah. from the first album on this record. Where even like Diary of a Madman, the song is very like you know, neoclassical, yeah. you know, with a lot of weird time signatures and a lot of, you know, you can tell that that's Randy Rhodes really worked hard on that song. Right. And, and it just, it clicks better. It's like, he's, he's getting the thing that he's been shooting for this whole time. I but mean, then you just also have, 
ragers like flying high again and uh, over, over the mountain. over the mountain <sighs> just like massive song oh huge yeah 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 that was i really that was like oh when we, yeah like i said i bought that when it came out and we were like oh man this is like so much better than the than the debut it's like fully formed it's like there's no filler on it every song counts the one thing i don't like about it is the cover oh i've never, no I've never liked it <laughs> I don't know why. It's just a bit cheesy, you know. It's What's definitely that thing a... they have in London, like the Chamber of Horrors or something. Yeah, like that. That may be that. yeah, and it, that's his son, right, on the cover or the back cover. I, don't I believe so. Yeah, yeah. He's and on then, the front, and uh... like the, the back. I like the back picture better, actually. Yeah. Okay. He's kind of in Never Say Die, kind of mode on the back. Yes. <laughs> yes, with the yeah. fringe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, and this is, you know, this is the last hurrah for uh, Lee Kerslake in the band. Uh, right. Bob Daisley was kind of in and out a little a little bit more for right. a while longer. But uh, that's the end of the original Blizzard band. Um, right. And those guys didn't even go out on tour for this record. The oh, really? Band. I didn't know that. Wow. Yeah, Tommy Aldridge and Rudy Sarzo. Okay. Um, Rudy Sarzo, who I saw play for Dio once. So it's oh. a nice little connection. Nice. So, Diary of a Madman, amazing record. It's going to yep. go up against Last in Line. Sorry, I think when I said Holy Diver, I said Last in Line back then. Sorry, but yeah, Last in Line. Oh, nice. Line. 1984. Yes. Last in Line. I think this one has my favorite cover art of all the four. Theo. Yeah, I'd agree with that. This is a great cover. Yeah. I like the sort of Egyptian theme. They did it... Uh, well, let's see. Same year, someone must have been pissed because it's the same year as uh, Iron Maiden did the Egyptian themed cover. Right, that, Egyptology very big then. That's um, actually my favorite song on the album. Egypt, the chains are on the epic closer. Yeah, that's a crusher. Yeah, although the guitar is a little quiet in that song, I always felt a little subdued in the mix. I don't know. It just feels like um, overall. Like it doesn't have the same magic as the first album, you know. You take it right. individually, piece by piece, and you're like, everything here is good. Mm. But it, maybe it's just it's not as spontaneous, or right. maybe just they they were going for something something else, and it just couldn't quite lock into it. It's a really good album. It's a really solid heavy metal album, but there is there's something. There's something that's not quite there, and so I don't reach for it as much. And whenever I put it on, I'm like, "Oh yeah, last in line, of course," you know. But you've got like uh, "I Speed at Night," which is that sort of almost speed metal. That song, song. rips. And then one thing uh, I noticed was uh, that the song "Breathless," like yeah. kind of half of the riff sounds like something from Sabotage. It's kind of got this. Go back and listen to it. It's interesting. It's got like a, yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, I kind of picked up on that. Breathless, yeah. Kind of reminded me of the something will be from sabotage. Yeah. Yeah. I you know, uh there's like a couple more attempts at like poppy kind of stuff. Yeah. Uh you know, you get like mystery on here. That was a single, um, right? Yeah, it was. Yeah. Which I think maybe maybe wasn't as helpful for them. because uh, wow. I don't think it was a particularly big hit. I don't know. I'm just spitballing. Yeah. One Night in the City is another one where That's it kind right. of feels yeah, like a bit, poppy. Uh, a bit poppy or it just, you know, it feels like a song that would, would get rotation on MTV. You know right. I mean? And uh, We Rock is a really good song too. Uh, that song's awesome. Yeah. Uh, that's a, that's a, I mean, the title track is also like just an amazing title track. Um, mm, yeah. What's the, on par did, with Holy Diver. Did the American hardcore band name themselves after this record? I don't think so. No, no. I don't okay. believe so. I thought I'd ask you. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so I guess it's time to uh, cast a vote. All right. So, for me, I mean, unquestionably, this is a vote for the Oz man. Yeah. So it, that makes us. That makes them two two. I mean, yeah. yeah. All right. Nice. Yeah. I've enjoyed sort of going back and listening to these records the last couple of weeks. It's been a lot of fun. Yeah, it really has. And I've definitely had a real change of heart about one record out of the next four. We'll get to that. 
Very interested to see what yeah. that is. So, next. Ready okay. to bark at the moon? <laughs> yeah, I am. I'm always ready. <laughs> oh, you, uh, you've got... Yours is blue. Now, I'm... If I'm remembering correctly, and I didn't check beforehand, the blue outline is the UK press. And different track list. I believe so. And let's have a little look. So the Japanese pressing is the same as the American pressing, the track listing. Okay. So, it's so what's your start with? Bark at the Moon. Okay. Same? You're correct. So mine starts with Rock and Roll Rebel. There you go, which is much better. Like the European pressing is a much better like sequencing. Because yep. on this, it goes Bark at the Moon, and it goes like straight into your, You're No Different, which I yep. stand that song. And especially as like coming in, sorry, like no, the second song on the album, it's too soon. It's like, you know, <laughs> <laughs> I think the European pressing, and then it's got Now You See It, Now You Don't, and then Rock and Roll Rebel is the last song on side one. Um, oh, weird. So they just flipped it all the way. That's so strange. And I think there's even different songs on it. So side two is Center of Eternity. That's not on the UK press, you're right? correct. And that is a cool song. Yeah, and then So Tired, which, oh, sorry. Oh, we're uh, going to have to talk about that, bro. Okay. <laughs> and then Slow Down and Waiting for Darkness. So, yeah. Different track list. Yeah. Weird. This one has spiders on it. Which right, is this one's song. Different. Yeah, so. That's so weird. Wonder why, wonder why they did that. It's kind of weird. Weird. I wonder, I mean, someone somewhere in some office at the record company just mm. said this will play better to uk audiences and yep. this is what american audiences want which is stupid it should have just they should have just put all the songs on the record it's weird because that that kind of stuff happened a lot more in the 70s with like stuff like the clash and things like that yeah i thought they kind of stopped doing that by the 80s but obviously obviously not so yeah. you know i i someone out there should look that up and let us know because <laughs> yeah. we don't know why we don't but, know um, why. why 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 yeah someone tell us why so <laughs> Dude, yeah, so I'm not, I'm not a huge. You don't sound fan. enthused about this record. Hmm? You don't sound very enthused about. No, this it's record. my least favorite of the four. So tell us your thoughts, Chris. School me on the ballads. I, look, <laughs> this record, like, I feel like it was seen as kind of a joke by some people when when I first became aware of it, which was way after the mm. fact because of the cover. Because it's like it is a silly cover. It it's is like silly, Ozzy and yeah. Werewolf makeup. Yeah. I think Rick Baker, who did um American Werewolf in London, I oh. think he did this makeup. I heard that. And I yeah. should also say Don Casarelli, who directed the Beastmaster and Phantasm, directed the music video for The Last in Line. So okay. I meant to mention that earlier. All right, cool. For all you movie fans out there. Cool. <laughs> yeah, there's Look, hundreds of them. <laughs> okay, Rock and Roll Rebel, like killer killer opener yeah. on this but i'm fine with it being moved around to a different position in the okay. track list right i think bark at the moon i mean i think every song on the album is good mm. i think what jakey e. lee brings is something different than the randy Rhodes, but it's not a step back or a step down I, he has I his keep, own mm. unique take on okay. on how he plays guitar right. um and, and you know, there's like bizarre song. Like Spiders is a weird song. Like Waiting for Darkness, pretty weird song. I've never heard Spiders. I've only, <laughs> I've only got the it, Japanese. It's definitely the last song on the record for a reason. Okay. Um, and I like it a lot. So like you, okay, you mentioned So Tired, which yeah. I can imagine kids at that time would not like. But when I hear it, it's, I mean, it's a total ELO ripoff. And it's done so well. Kind of little bit Beatles esque, which yeah, the ELO, yeah, with the violins, the strings, and, and I, I like that because Ozzy is always saying his favorite band is the Beatles, his favorite yeah, band is point. the Beatles, and it's just like it's so cool that on a record that looks like this, he was just like, fuck it, we do a Beatles song, and <laughs> and like no one could say no. He's got a great band here, he's got Tommy Aldridge on the record on drums, he's yeah. got Bob Daisley again on bass. Um, Don Airy again on keys. Yeah. And I mean, I like it because it's adventurous because he could have just done, you know what, this is 83 at this point. He could have just done like whatever. He could have done that glam album or he could have just done like a, you know, kind of like middle of the road speed metal record. But right. every song has its own identity. Every song is immaculately like realized. And, and yeah, man, I just think it's got hooks all across the board. 
um and it works like it, it right. just it's it's great i love this record nice i might have to go and re-listen to it again i need to get that pressing because i'm intrigued by spiders and uh well now i'm annoyed that there's songs <laughs> on the american pressing that aren't even on here so right. now i have to, to get both there must be a, a, a cd of like everything i'm sure yeah, probably. I do have it on CD, and I think mm. it has every all the songs you all right. mentioned. But okay. Very irritating that they're not all on there. Yeah, it is. It is. It is irritating. Yeah. I didn't actually know until I looked. I kind of looked it up, and I was like, "Damn, totally different track list." So, yeah. Yeah. Mm. Okay. okay. So, how do you feel about this? Well, here we go. Oh, Japanese pressing, no obi. Okay. Got my least favorite artwork of the four this is a disaster cover art wise like what's this like it just <laughs> yeah it's just not up to snuff and no. and i mean you know whatever like i i really i love all these albums i know all these albums but even the back it, it just it looks kind of crappy I, yeah it's tough for you to see probably on on right. zoom but uh it just looks like rushed and it's not so good it does but one thing about this record no ballads that's true that's yeah. absolutely true it's a great heavy metal record i love rock and roll Child children the single i like every song on this record i for me it's not like a step down in any way for me personally this uh, is the last one from the original band right um, and vivian campbell i don't think did the tour for this okay um they mounted it. I actually, I meant to grab this, but I didn't. I have a tour book from this tour. Oh, nice. And this was their most expensive tour. They shot a video for okay. it, a home video uh, in Philadelphia, of all places. Right. Um, you can look it up on YouTube. It's, it's a really expensive stage set. And I think mm. this was sort of meant to launch them to okay. the next, next level. Um, yeah, I think Rock and Roll Children is my like fa uh, favorite single from all the records. I prefer it to Rainbow in the Dark, to be honest. With oh, you. wow. Really? Okay. Yeah. Controversial opinion. I don't like the keyboards in Rainbow in the Dark, that keyboard riff. It's good. Ronnie played that. Did uh, he really? They didn't have a keyboardist on the record, oh. so it sounds a little amateur, but. Yeah, I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't pick up on that. I just don't like the melody very much in that mm. line, but I think they could do without it. But I guess it makes it more commercial. But uh, yeah. It does. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I like this record. It's not my favorite. Right. Um, and it's, it, it's almost a little uh, anonymous to me. Um, okay. it just, they sound a little tired. Um, I think they were, there was some infighting going on. Um, Vivian Campbell still plays great, but um, I don't know. It's just, it's not, not quite, not quite in the same zone for me. Okay. Um, and I think that tour sort of, if you look at tour footage from the tour after that, uh, it's a lot more modest stage setup. Okay. Um, you know, they had like an animatronic dragon. There was a castle, like they really went all out. Nice. Um, and, and I think, you know, they were sort of looking to hit that Iron Maiden level right. and, and it didn't quite hit. Okay. Um, and that was that was you know you were talking about earlier people you know weren't even really clocking Dio as like mm -hmm. a thing uh, when you were checking out heavy metal and I, yeah I, to me I feel like this might have been the time when the popularity was really starting to slide. So 1985, like what was going on in the world of heavy metal in 1985? What other ugh, off the top of my head I can't think of. Well, I would say so. You had stuff like Motley Crue had now like established like a certain okay. amount of dominance. Right. And then you also had Dokken, which I think like starting here and going on to the next album, there's a lot of similarities with, with uh, Dokken. Good point. Yeah. Um, and, you know, then on the other side, so Metallica wasn't established yet, but they were, they were getting bigger tours and they were on a major label and they were getting magazine coverage same with anthrax so right. it was sort of like that i my perception you know because i was you know four years old <laughs> there was a split happening 
and then you have a band like this in the middle and it's kind of like it's a little bit heavier than these like commercial guys right but it's a little bit lighter than these heavy guys and mm -hmm. like where does this fit in and who is right. this for? good point so what's your pick i think i can guess i mean absolutely <laughs> bark at the moon it it's a it's the better third album to me right so we're gonna disagree on this i'm gonna go with this i like it <laughs> i like i like the i i like that you're taking a stand for sacred heart yeah i mean for me it's it's not a step down at all really i excellent. mean excellent excellent yeah and i just like the no ballads thing i'm not a fan of the ballads with these bands so okay just you know okay That's so fair. the last couple we're almost sort of they're getting closer aren't they yeah so, ultimate sin is 86 1986 yes. ultimate sin Wow, look at that. That's a beautiful OB strip. Yeah. Very nicely designed. If I remember rightly, the Japanese title is like Sin and Punishment or something like that. It translates to. That's kind of good. Cool. I'm going to take that. <laughs> Use that for something. Something like that. So I've got a uh, Shot in the Dark 12-inch uh, single with the blown cool. up uh, ugly head on it too. What's on the B side of that? Uh, Killer of Giants okay. and I think it's a live version of Rock and Roll Rebel. Okay. So... It's not, not none too exciting, but you mm -hmm. know, one of those things you see right. and you grab it. Right. So I was saying earlier, there was a record in this pile that I've kind of reappraised. This is it. Yeah. I hadn't played this record for many years, to be honest with you. Um, took it out a couple of weeks ago and I was like, damn, this is a great record. Uh, now production, can be a little, a little jarring mm -hmm. it's kind of raw but by the sort of middle of the first song you're kind of used to it and i think it works like um jk lee's guitar tone is kind of pretty filthy on this record it's a really nasty sound it is right and um, again there's not really a ballad on there killer of giants is kind of a semi-ballad but not really so mm -hmm. no ballads title tracks amazing secret loser is killer never know why is great my least favorite song is Never. It's kind of a little bit of a dirgy song. But yeah, I mean, this record kind of actually surprised me, especially as I, as I was sort of fishing around the internet. People were like, well, Ozzy was done with Bark at the Moon, everything after Bark at the Moon, blah, 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 blah. But I think this is way, way, way better than Bark at the Moon, like personally. Yeah. I found this, uh, I got a merchandise sheet. In oh, here. damn. Very nice. I like the baseball jersey. Yeah, oh, it looks good. This is fun, Chris. I'll, I'll take this out. This The Japanese has this uh, sticker sheet. Oh, man. They love those sticker sheets, but, and they're always amazing. But the idiot, like, he just peeled off this one. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, <laughs> where I want to track that down. It's almost almost complete. Yeah, uh, sticker sheet. Yeah. Beautiful stuff. Go. So what's your take on Ultimate Sin, Chris? I mean, this album is great, you know, yeah. and it was, I, it might even, it was out of print for a long time. Oh, yeah. And I don't know if Sharon or Ozzy didn't like it or thought it was corny. I do like this album a lot. I, I mean, Shot in the Dark is, is an amazing single. It was written by Phil Susone. Yeah. Kind of a session guy and kind it's... of a crazy lunatic on Twitter now, but. Right. Uh, yeah, ben, boy, could he write a song. Right. Um, you've got. Randy Castillo on drums. Yep. Um, I mean, this is like classic Jakey Lee playing. Right. I think Oz sounds a little bit strained on mm. some of these tracks. You mm. can tell like there's been a little bit of damage to the voice box. Right. Um, but I think the thing that you're, you're saying is that you almost like it because it's more conventionally heavy metal. It doesn't have some yeah. of the weird songs and ballads. Yeah. No, and like even though... Mm. I think that's cool of Ozzy's more conventional heavy metal albums. I prefer the stuff with Zach maybe. And I like bark at the moon hmm. as sort of like the, the best statement of the Jake era. And so right. I, I rank this one a little less, but like, okay. you know, we're tight. Like these are all wonderful albums to yeah. me and they're, they're yeah. all a lot of fun. Yeah. It's kind of hard to choose in some of the, yeah, in some cases. It definitely is. Yeah. So, last one in the pack, in the pile. Dream Evil. Dream Evil. 
spooky cover. Also not a great cover. Another no. one where I just think it's got, we're kind of striking out on the cover image. Um, yeah, we're not, it's kind of a little bit, um, I don't, you know, I'm kind of a fan of kind of the um, amateurish paintings on heavy metal records, but this one is, I don't know. It's like, it's, I will say we're not really going to talk about this record, but this is a much better cover. Lock up the wolves. Absolutely. It's that, that's from 1990, right? Yes, it is. Okay. So it falls outside our, uh, our purview here, but yeah, you know, I just, I want to give recognition where it's due. There is another good, uh, Dio cover right. after okay okay, okay. yeah so I don't really have too much to say about this record it's definitely my least favorite of the first four I just think it's kind of a weak version of Sacred Heart really that's what I have to say about it I don't know uh, <laughs> I can see you <laughs> well <'cause, laughs> all right so I think I have a different I think for me that like I feel the way about this that you maybe feel about um Bark at the Moon yeah but uh no no uh uh ultimate sin. ultimate sin <laughs> blanking yeah. out here um and the reason so vivian campbell left before the preceding tour and oh, who, who craig, we got on here chris who's playing guitar on this? craig goldie is on guitar right. the rest of the band is still intact at this point right. um and actually craig goldie is on guitar in that philadelphia video that i mentioned okay. so they brought him in for that tour and he's on this record he went in and out of dio a couple of times over right. the years He's not as creative of a soloist as Vivian Campbell. Right. His solos, I think, are they're exactly what people wanted at the time. They don't have as much personality, but I think his riffs are really cool. Um, you get some stuff like Night People, mm. you know, all the fools sailed away, like they're, you know, kind of kind of a docking feel to them. A lot of people were saying that that's their like one of their favorite Dio songs. All the fools. I mean, away. I think it, it's kind of for fans. It's kind of a signature cut. But right. then you also get like Dream Evil, which almost is like a throwback to like a Blackmore style of riffing. Yeah. Okay. And I mean, that must be intentional, given you know that Ronnie's singing on this record. Right. And I, so I like that because I like. I presume that he was like, you know, what I've always wanted to do with you is do like a rainbow style song. Right. You know, but we're yeah. going to, like, update it and make it, you know, more bombastic for the 80s. Right. And I think that's a fun idea. So it's always enjoyable to hear the, the cuts that sound like that. And then I also, I do like that there's some, like, really conventional, almost generic 80s heavy metal. Like, again, right. I sort of think, like, in the Dokken mold, um, maybe not quite Twisted Sister, but... Mm. It's cool to hear that style. I what what I've been calling it actually is night metal. Okay. And it's like <laughs> it's it just it sounds like it just sounds like like a like a metal song that like can't be played before the sun is down. Yeah. And I'm, I'm, there's like right, just this is was just down on the floor. But I think this fits. I yeah. Of this course. Record. It yeah. totally fits what we're talking about, I think. <laughs> and like, I, to me, like uh, Dokken and like mm. solo Joe Lynn Turner, that's the ultimate yeah. night metal. Right. <laughs> and this is kind of like the Dio night metal record. Okay. Um, you know, and like, I mean, the first song, Night People, like that right. is just pure night metal. There's right. like a very prominent, right. like, um, you know, synth going over it. It's like pretty fast, but it doesn't ever hit like speed metal territory. Mm. It's like kind of, you know, dark and, you know, if there was a music video, like the street would be wet and there'd be fog <laughs> and like a couple of neon right. lights. And it's just like, it yeah. all congeals and there, it's a certain thing. And I, right. I it's right. fun. I like, I, I love Ronnie Dio. Hmm. I love hearing his voice. And I, it's, it's cool to hear him do some stuff like that. Kind right. of almost the same way, like Judas Priest Turbo is an album where it's, hmm. it's super a super generic style of poppy heavy metal, but like, it's cool. Cause you get to hear Rob Halford take a shot at that. Right. And, you know, yep. it's a moment in time, but it's cool. And so I really do like this record. Okay. And it's, I really think it's underrated. Okay. So I think I can guess which way you're going to go on this one. You can. So ultimate sin, one point dream evil, one point, which two, 
I think that puts us at a tie. It does, yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Not planned. Which, uh, that folks. seems the fairest outcome, I think. I, you know what? At the end of the day, it, it really is impossible to choose. Um, no, no. Two of the absolute greats, man. Absolutely. Just, yeah, fantastic. You know, it was really was fun. It was a lot of fun going back and listening to all these records. So it was really enjoyable. Yeah. So, so fun. Thanks for coming up with the idea to do this. Hey, hey thank you for having me again, yeah. man. It yeah, really we'll is do another one. I had, I had an idea. I'll, I'll tell you off camera when we finish this up. All right. So, top secret stuff. Yeah, top, top secret, top secret. Yeah. So thanks again, Chris. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in. If you haven't listened to some of these records for a while, I do urge you to go back and kind of revisit some of these records because they are all amazing, right? Yeah, Absolutely. yeah. Look, yeah. Check the local used bin because you can still get lucky on these. Exactly, yeah. So thanks a lot, Chris. See you soon. Until next time, stay healthy and stay clean. <laughs>